Hello and welcome back. I've picked up the latest news for you so you know the market trends and what is happening on the market. And traditionally, we start with cryptocurrency rates as of today. So Bitcoin is now trading at $27,929. It is 0.94% lower comparing to the previous day and 1.58% lower comparing to the previous week. Ethereum is now $1,868. It is 1.63% 1 lower comparing to the previous day and 4.14% higher comparing to the previous week. Uh, BNB is now 312. Um, that is 0.49% lower comparing to the previous day and 1.30% percent lower comparing to the previous week uh, and having all this in mind let's switch to the news and and discover what affects this picture and what in general is happening in the crypto and tech uh, world dogecoin down eight percent as musk's twitter hype fades um so uh, dogecoin has fallen 8.6% in the last 24 hours, a sign that the price of the world's most popular meme coin could be undergoing a correction after it was briefly pumped by Twitter CEO Elon Musk this week. On Monday, Dodge ballooned 20% less than an hour after Musk changed the iconic blue bird logo on the social media site to a picture of Dodge, the adorable Shiba Inu behind the iconic meme that inspired the coin. The intraday drop hasn't yet wiped out Dodge's heady gains over the last seven days. According to data by CoinGecko, it's still up nearly 80% over the week. The coin's rally kicked off last weekend after a long-time Dogecoin fan Elon Musk filed a motion with the U.S. judge on Friday to dismiss a $258 billion lawsuit accusing him of allegedly running a racketeering scheme to back the cryptocurrency. NFT market re uh, reaches $2 billion in trading volume in March. The non-fungible token market experienced a remarkable upswing in February 2023 reaching a total trading volume of over $2 billion. Uh, that is reported by Dap Radar. This search marked a 117% increase compared to January and continued into March, with only a slight decrease to just under $2 billion. Market-wide data from Dap Radar and supplementary on-chain information from Dune revealed that the trading volume in March amounted to $1.95 million, billion, I'm sorry, a 4% drop from February's all-time high of $2.04 billion. Blur, an Ethereum-based NFT marketplace, was the main contributor to this volume. Responsible for nearly $1.35 billion in trades, up from $1.32 billion in February. Uh, Blur's trading activity experienced a significant boost in mid-February after the introduction of its Blur reward token, which has enticed large-scale whale traders who act as market makers. TerraWolf increases operating hash rate by 50% in March. TerraWolf uh, said on Thursday its March average operating hash rate increased by 50% on a monthly basis to 3.08. Um, EH per S. The Bitcoin mining company self mines three uh, 233 Bitcoin during the month uh, with the average production rate of 7.5 Bitcoin per day. Terry Wolf said its power costs remain consistent with a target of $0.035 per kilo, um, a kilowatt across its two mining sites with an average uh, cost of 7.5 zero thousand dollars per bitcoin produced or 0 0.032 dollars per kilo kilowatt as of march the 31st the company had an operational miner fleet of 27.2 thousand 
miners. Singapore to release new crypto client vetting guidance for banks. Singapore regulators are reportedly working alongside police forces to develop uniform guidelines for banks to aid in screening potential crypto clients. According to Crypto from Bloomberg, the Monetary Authority of Singapore is working with local police forces to develop new guidelines to help banks optimize procedures for vetting potential crypto clients who want to open accounts, citing personal familiar um, persons familiar with the matter, the central bank, alongside police, has been working with lenders in the city state over the past six months to establish uniform standards to screen clients. US Treasury warns that DeFi used by North Korea scammers to launder dirty money. Um, decentralized finance services that are in compliance with anti money laundering and terrorist financing rules pose the most significant current illicit finance risk in that corner of the crypto sector that is according to the U.S. Department of the Treasury's first analysis of hazards from technology. Uh, the Treasury said thieves, scammers, ransomware cyber criminals and actors for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea are using DeFi to launder proceeds from crime. On the basis of findings, the Treasury recommends an asset of possible enhancements to U.S. anti-money laundering requirements and the rules for countering the financing of terrorism as they should be applied to DeFi services. It also calls for input from the private sector to inform the next steps. I quote, uh, the private sector should use the findings of this ass assessment to inform their own risk mitigation strategies. According to Brian Nelson, Treasury's Undersecretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence uh, said in a statement. So this uh, for 40 page report warns that DeFi services at present often do not implement AML, CFT controls, or other processes to identify customers, allowing layering of proceeds to take place instantaneously and pseudonymously. The report references several instances where DeFi projects have affirmatively touted a lack of AML, CFT controls as one of the primary goals of decentralization. Of decentralization. Google to stop loan apps from getting users' personal information. And that sounds interesting. Google has recently updated its policy on personal loan apps, which could have significant implications for the industry. According to a report by TechCrunch, the tech giant pushed an update to its personal loans policy on Wednesday for apps on Play Store to restrict loan apps from accessing users' sensitive information like photos, external storages, uh, videos, contacts, precise location, and call logs. This is coming over four years after Google published a set of new rules to keep its users safe from the predatory loan apps that were beginning to multiply in its store. This new policy is Google's way of protecting consumers from these potentially predatory lending practices from some lenders that have led to harassing borrowers. The change will come into effect from the, uh, from the 31st of May uh, 2023 and um, Actually, this also affects apps that offer loans direct to customers, lead generators, and those that put customers in touch with third-party lenders. From the US to Australia, regulatory not around Binance Titans. Binance Australia's derivatives license has been revoked by the Australian Securities and Investments Commission as part of an ongoing target review of Binance's businesses in the country, according to a press release issued on Thursday. The command was given in response to Binance's own request to cancel the license. Following a formal hearing conducted by ASIC to consider whether to revoke it from the, uh, from the 14th of April, uh, clients down under won't be able to increase their derivatives positions or open new ones. Binance Australia has been ordered to close all clients open derivative uh, positions by the 21st of April. Uh, so, um, ASIC Chair Joe, uh, Joe Longo said, 
It is critically important that AFS licenses classify retail and wholesale clients in accordance with their law, and retail clients trading in crypto der derivatives are afforded important rights and consumer protections under financial services laws in Australia, including access to external dispute resolution through the Australian Financial Compla uh, Complaints Authority. Um, so more control, um, more protection for consumers, and that's a good thing. And the good thing is that you are watching this video. So uh, click like and subscribe buttons. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting for you for the next video. Have a good day.